Good evening, everyone. Um, so I will be talking about uh, real life examples of uh, in, uh, AI, machine learning, through three domains, which are images, video, and voice. And I will take uh, three examples of customers, and we'll look uh, together exactly what they are doing with that. Uh, I'm Stefan Edinger. I'm looking after the thank you, looking after the technical team in AWS uh, France. I've been uh, in AWS for six years, so I had the privilege to, to watch a lot of customers uh, evolve and, and do really uh, very super innovative things. Uh, as you may know, AWS actually, so Amazon Web Services, is the cloud computing part of the Amazon group. It's completely separate from the e-commerce website. Actually, the e-commerce website is a customer of AWS. So if you are a happy customer of Amazon.fr, actually the servers run, uh, run in AWS. We have millions of customers uh, worldwide. We have uh, tens of thousands of customers in France. And we've and literally in every kind of workloads, like banks, like gaming, media, startups, of course, and, and literally uh, all the, uh, the kind of workloads. We've been uh, inv uh, investing in France for uh, the last uh, six years with teams that are here. We are located in uh, La Défense in Paris. We also uh, opened uh, three data centers uh, in Paris uh, last year in December. So it also was important for some of our customers to be able to run those workloads uh, in France. But tonight I will talk about um, AI, machine learning. Um, actually, in, in the Amazon group, we've been using uh, AI and ML for many years. It's not very well known. And we've seen uh, also a lot of customers uh, starting to, to gain interest and an uptake of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Actually, I think it's, there's never been a better time to do AI and ML, probably because of three things. The first one is data. To, do, to build a model in AI, you need data, actually a lot of data. And today, there is a lot of data available through IoT, through sensors, through uh, open, open data, through uh, clickstream analysis, and so on. So the critical mass of data available is there. Second thing is a lot, and really a lot, of compute. CPUs, GPUs, and the, the, the best, uh, the, the, as fast as you can. Again, it's uh, ability with the cloud to have access to those, uh, those the fastest uh, CPUs and GPUs available on the market at a very affordable price. And the third one is also a critical mass in knowledge, in algorithms. Because uh, also it's um, bringing to every developer access to those algorithms that has been tuned by specialists but can be used by many, many developers. And the combination of those three, um, three elements, see, we, we think, and I think, it means there is the, the barrier of entry to AI and ML is collapsing today. So this is really the, the right moment to start. Let's uh, start with, a, let's say, a simple example, images. And uh, we say uh, tagging of images. We call it also a feature detection. So we have a, a service called um, Recognition. It's ready to use. You send a picture, and it, in a couple of, uh, of milliseconds later, the uh, image is automatically tagged. So here you can see um, boats, uh, waterfront, uh, dock, and so on. That's cool. That's easy to use. But what can you do with that? What does it mean as a business impact? So let me show you what Expedia is doing with that. Uh, Expedia is, I guess, it's a, a well-known brand. Actually, it's a lot of different brands, like Hotels.com and, and many others. Expedia, in terms of numbers, they have nearly 300,000 hotels, which publish more than 10 million pictures. And when you look at the front page of, an, uh, uh, page of a hotel, it, it takes, for your eye, it takes only 1 20th of a second to analyze the image to make an opinion, a first opinion. And looking at the, the, the picture, you have a first opinion. You didn't start to look at the price or the name or whatever. You already have an opinion. So let's, let's play a game. I will show you two pictures. Just think about, think to yourself, which one you would choose. And those are real, uh, real examples. <laughs> so as you can guess, choosing the right, the right picture to put on the front page is very important. It has a huge impact on, uh, on the choice. The problem, the problem is that hotels, they provide the pictures, but it's totally inconsistent. Sometimes it's random order. Sometimes it's by uh, 
uh, alphabetical order, sometimes all the, all the lobbies and so on. So how to choose? Um, you remember, 10 million pictures, so that's a bit hard to do manually. So of course, it's uh, a deep learning and um, artificial intelligence. At the same time, they, they didn't want to spend months in this project because they didn't know if it would work. So instead of building from scratch, they chose to use a pre-trained model. It's called VGG16. You can find it. It's open source. And the model has already been trained on 14 million pictures, and it detects more than 1,000 features, elements on the, on the picture. So that's, this one is ready to use. Now, again, it doesn't tell you which picture to, to show first. It, tell you, it tells you if the, the picture, if you see, um, uh, let's say, a nice uh, trees or, or swimming pool, but that's, that's all it says. So actually, they, add, they added a second layer, a very simple layer that scores, ranks all the pictures for, and gives a note from 1 to 10, 10 being the highest. And they chose 100,000 pictures that they manually rated. They took uh, real people to rate them. Actually, each, each picture has been rated by six different persons. It took them uh, one week to do that. They trained uh, the, uh, the, so the right part of the model, took them like two days to train it. And they got very, very interested results. So let's, uh, I will show you some, some examples. So that's a, a motel in, I guess, in, 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 Miami, in Florida, in Miami. Uh, so you have on the, on the left side all the pictures in random order, and you have the, uh, the top uh, pictures, so a picture of the room, picture of the swimming pool, and the worst one, which are basically the, the, the parking lot and, and uh, a not, not so nice picture of the lobby. So uh, it was very, very effective, and they, they gained like a, a few, uh, a couple of percent more transformation rate on the sales, which is huge, at, at this scale, which is huge. Even more interestingly, actually the rating of the pictures depends on customers, meaning that in some, depending on the countries where the customers are or regions and cultures, some are, are more sensitive to swimming pools, some are, are more sensitive to the picture of the room itself. So they all, also can adjust which picture to choose from, uh, from other um, elements. And so the interesting thing is actually they didn't need to have uh, real experts in uh, AI and deep learning because it was only a small part. And they did the whole project in, in a few weeks. And it was very, very uh, beneficial. So uh, what did they use? And what we offer uh, is really a whole suite of, um, of elements to, to, help, uh, to help them and all customers. From the bottom is really the infrastructure. So the compute, the, the raw power. And we've been investing a lot with our partners, with, so on GPUs with NVIDIA. We are, today we propose the, the fastest GPU on the market, also with Intel, with the Skylake processors, which are also the fastest processors on the market. We also choose to be very open to all the open source frameworks that exist on the market. So actually all our customers, and uh, the real thing is those frameworks, they depend on the type of workload. For instance, CAFE is more used for image analysis, whereas TensorFlow or MXNet are used in other areas. So actually, we want to support all of them and th then let our customers choose. But then, even at that level, you need some kind of expertise. So we went one step further, and it's uh, mainly uh, the, uh, I will focus on uh, SageMaker. It's how to simplify things with notebooks, See, see that uh, like, like a cookbook, like uh, you have uh, do dozens of uh, ready-to-use uh, uh, recipes. You can try them and you can adapt them. Our goal here is to put AI and ML in the, um, in the hands of every developer. If you know how to develop, you should be able to start to do that. And of course, we've added with some pre-trained models, with services that you can just use out of the box without knowing anything in AI and ML, and literally uh, start in minutes and, and use them uh, as you want in any kind of uh, context. In different categories, like uh, image and video processing, uh, also uh, text analysis, like uh, sentiment analy analysis, uh, translation, things like that, and also I'll cover the, the chat part um, at, at the end. Now, so pictures, very static. Now let's move to video moving images, and I will take the city of Orlando. City of Orlando is uh, experimenting uh, our services and ready-to-use services for the sake of improving uh, public safety. And uh, I will show you the video and what exactly an uh, AI model can detect on a video. So the, the video will detect uh, people, cars, a dog, 
and also will follow uh, people uh, as they come and analyze the, the direction they, they take. Actually, it also tells you if people are walking, running, and many, many other elements. And the city of Orlando, they have many, many cam video cameras, and they don't have enough people to watch all the cameras. So they are experimenting this service to actually see if there are some, um, let's say, events of interest. For instance, if you have uh, um, people running in the morning, everybody's running on, in the same direction, oh, it's okay, it's, it's just the uh, joggers. If you start in the middle of the day to have many people uh, starting to run in, in every direction, maybe the, there's something happening. So the system is just alarming uh, somebody so that uh, somebody looks at the picture. Maybe it's nothing, but maybe that's something important to, to, to watch at. So that's a very interesting combination of using automated detection of features and just uh, triggering events so that some, some human uh, people can check if something's okay or, or not. I didn't put the slides, but there, there's also um, a very interesting event coming uh, in the following days. I don't know the date exactly. It's the, the royal wedding from Prince Harry. Uh, the Sky Channel has just announced that they are using uh, the same kind of technology to uh, automatically detect all the, uh, the, uh, the, the people that you will see on the, on the TV. So there are uh, 600 people that are invited, uh, celebrities and, and many, many interesting people. So they are using this, uh, this, this exact same technology to uh, automatically and in real time uh, detect and recognize exactly who is at the wedding on, on each picture. Now let's took, take another example still on, on video and there is this combination and I will, it's Amazon.com, so it's the retail part, the e-commerce part. And uh, the example is Amazon Go. I don't know if you're aware of that. It's a new shop that's opened in Seattle. There are more to come. Uh, the idea, uh, let's, let's look at the video. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. That's really cool. Um, the thing is, actually, we are so uh, used to pay at the cashier that uh, when you start uh, trying that and you exit the shop without paying, you, you're getting very anxious, very uncomfortable. It's, it's not natural. And, and the worst part, uh, you, you need to be cautious because if you start to, s to do the same thing in other shops, you may have some trouble. So, again, a question of habits. Um, how does it work? Actually, it's not RFID. It's more, it's hard to see on the picture, but actually there are many, many uh, video cameras on the top uh, of, the, of the floor. There are also sensors on the shelves. And the idea is, so when you enter the shop, there is a QR code, the system recognizes you, you. And the system, all the cameras follow you and see exactly where you go, what you are taking, putting back, and, and gets this uh, virtual shopping cart. So it's, it's really a lot of cameras, and uh, we realize that it's hard to have video cameras with also included ability to run AI models with the deep learning. So actually, uh, from that experience, we built a product. The product is called the AWS Deep Lens. It's the, actually, it's the first physical product we, we sell. Uh, uh, it's a, a wireless uh, HD video camera that includes an AI uh, runtime. So it, there's a CPU, there's a GPU, and also we've, we've really streamlined the whole process. You use a SageMaker to build the model, and really, with the click of a button, you then deploy all those models in the, the cameras or, or in other devices without, and again, the, the, the focus is focus on the model, on the data. Do not focus on all the plumbing that needs to be uh, built to just deploy the code and the models. So that's, that's, uh, that's available, and we, we're seeing uh, really, really very interesting, uh, innovating things from, uh, from our customers. Now let's, so we've seen pictures, we've seen video, I would just want to finish with voice, which uh, in my sense is probably um, the most disruptive thing for the, the near and the, the midterm future. Actually, of course, a voice is the most natural way to communicate, exactly what I'm doing uh, here right now, but also for, for kids, for the families, and, and so on. So voice is at the center, 
And what's difficult with voice and what, why it requires uh, AI, it's there are so many ways to ask the same thing. Ask, ask the weather. There are three examples, of, but there are many, many, many more uh, ways to, to ask the same question. So you really need to have a deep, um, deep, le deep, deep learning training for, to recognize all this, recognize the voice, recognize the intent, and um, provide the right solution. Actually, uh, it's also a challenge for developers because uh, there are many ways to uh, ask the question. But also, uh, people expect that uh, Alexa in this um, area also answers in many different ways. Meaning that if you have an, uh, an interaction and Alexa always answers the same, the same way, it kind of it gets robotic. It gets annoying. It's not natural. And people don't expect that. Also, it's always a question of building an ecosystem. So Alexa has some building features, but also it's to open to other brands. Exactly like... Uh, like an app store for your smartphone, but the, the, the voice version of that. Uh, that's one of the examples, a very interesting one. It's uh, Capital One. So Capital One is a very, a very big uh, retail bank in the US. They are, they are uh, really, they have a very strong uh, digital approach and they've developed this um, skill, which, and the challenge was how to make it, uh, let's say, enjoyable to talk to its bank. And Talking to your bank is not probably not the most natural thing here, or the, the thing you want to do uh, every day. So they worked a lot in, in how to build this interaction. Actually, in terms of skills, there are more than uh, 30,000 skills today available. It's open to every developer. We also open a way, we call it blueprints, blueprints so you can create a skill with zero line of codes. Um, probably one question that I anticipate, uh, when does Alexa come uh, in France? Uh, it's uh, this year, in 2018. And the good news, you can already start to develop skills in French for the future French version of Alexa. It's open to it's uh, developer.alexa.com. And you can, you can try, you can already publish skills for the, this future launch. What animal is a member of genus Canis and is also referred to as man's best friend? Player two. Dog. That is correct. <laughs> Don't listen. So that's also important to, uh, to open to a re really a wide range of, of use cases. So it's not only the weather, it's not only banks, but also to really bring back the family around, uh, around Alexa, around games and things like that. What you've seen here, it's been launched in the US, it's called uh, Alexa Buttons. So you can really uh, pair those buttons with, uh, with Alexa and like imagine like all kinds of uh, interaction you, you can think of. Of course, it works for um, Amazon branded devices. So it's uh, the, the portfolio of Echo devices is expanding uh, a lot. But uh, same thing, we're really thinking about giving the, uh, this in the hands of all developers. Meaning that actually, there's a, um, you can um, include, embed the Alexa technology in any device. Example is, of course, cars. There's one situation where talking, having a vocal interaction is super important for safety. When you're driving, you need to watch the road and keep your hands on the, on the steering. Not, uh, not, do not play with a smartphone when you drive. So uh, that's typically an, an excellent example of voice interaction. This, this one is a Ford, which uh, included Alexa in uh, all the, the, the cars, but many, many other um, car providers uh, did that. It's also, uh, so it's been, uh, embedded in many, many devices. My favorite, it's, uh, it's called uh, Tribi from Invoxia. It's a French startup. It's a sm uh, very uh, funny uh, radio that, uh, for the family that also includes the, um, the Alexa technology. Uh, I, I forgot to say, actually, including Alexa in a device, it's completely free. There is no royalties or, or whatever. It's our, our goal here is really to democratize this, this access to voice technology to any kind of, uh, of users. And again, to, uh, to, to, as you would, say, you would see, it's also to being very intuitive, very natural. So the next one is about, uh, playing uh, hide and seek. 19, 20. Alexa, tell everyone, ready or not, here I come. Announcing in all rooms. Ready or not, here I come. I wonder where they could be. <laughs> so thank you very much. Is there any question, please? One, uh, one very basic uh, question in uh, voice recognition is call for help. You have somewhere, oscuro, help. 
without any training? Is it something that a device like uh, you described can uh, take without too many false alarms? That, that could be, a, you, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, that could be a, indeed a, a, an interesting use case. So if you use Alexa, you just need to, de to say Alexa help. <laughs> because that, that's the way, actually, it's, it's important for privacy. Meaning that the, the device, the electronics in the device is constantly uh, listening, but recording nothing. And there is a wake word that you can uh, customize. Uh, in, in, it can be Alexa or others. When you say Alexa, so the recognition is local to the device. And then it triggers the, the fact that he, now Alexa listens to you. There is also some, um, which, something which is difficult. It's a far field uh, listening. So actually it creates a kind of a beam with very selective to listen only to you and, and get rid of the, all the uh, ambient, uh, ambient sound. So uh, in terms of technology, I guess you, we could uh, imagine like instead of Alexa, like help or school or whatever. Um, um, actually, also, uh, we have some partners. We're working with Intel and, and others. The, um, there's a, the device. Uh, actually, it's an array of seven microphones to, to detect the, the one word or a wake word, and also to have this uh, beam. You can, um, you can buy this, just this piece of electronics to be embedded in any kind of devices. That's also something, something on the market. A uh, hardware question, please. So you mentioned that you work with a CPU and a GPU and a Skylake for the CPU. What is the difference? Do you use them for different workloads? And another question, do you experiment with the new types of processors that are, it's an emerging market, right? The hardware is specifically designed for AI um, uh, software. Uh, do you have any experimentation or anything to add on that topic? Well, the thing, the, the way we work is really uh, listening to our customers about the, what they need, what they expect, and the kind of, um, and also working with our technology partners to uh, to get um, and to bring into the hands of the, our customers the new technology as quickly as possible. Um, so uh, between CPUs and GPUs, it really depends on on the the workload. It really depends on the algorithms. Some of them are like. Um, um, video, um, image feature detection are very well tuned for, uh, for GPUs. And actually, uh, we use a lot internally uh, MXNet. And one of the reasons is because it's very, it's very highly scalable. Uh, on GPUs, on a single machine uh, with the latest, so it's a Volta v, uh, V100, uh, NVIDIA GPUs for the specialist, on a single machine, you have more than uh, 40,000 cores per machine. So this is really a huge, uh, uh, let's say, huge power. Uh, but some algorithm works better on CPUs. So again, it's uh, Skylake uh, processors. And we are monitoring with our customers what's the best, let's say, uh, ratio, uh, speed first, and the best ratio on, on cost, uh, cost versus performance. And today, if the, the algorithms are uh, OK for GPUs, uh, the, the NVIDIA Volta V100, are, it's the best ratio we're seeing on the market. For, for, for new hardware, uh, so I can disclose anything, but it's really this way we're really um, working with our customers about wh what's the demand, what are the use cases, and what's, uh, what's the best solution. And if, there are, if there's really, um, let's say, a convergent interest in, in some uh, other technologies, uh, we'll look at it very carefully. I have a quick question be between, the, between the audience one. Uh, the Orlando, Orlando use case is very impressive. Um, and uh, we can imagine many services and new way of of using AI. Uh, basically, how you deal with all you know conf confidentiality and GDPR requirement, and how do you help your clients yeah. to deal with that? Because it's, even if it's a it's a wow effect, I mean they they have to deal with that. Yeah, thanks. That's a very good question. So um, let's start with the GDPR. Uh, the, the good news, we uh, in AWS, all our services are already GDPR compliant. GDPR is in effect like uh, next week, something like that. 25, 26? 25. 25, so I guess it's next week, so some ish. Uh, so all the services are already compliant with GDPR. So that, that's um, it's a, not a concern for our customers. But the most Im important thing is that all the data, the pictures, the videos, and so on, they are owned by the customers and only by the customers, so they, they are their own. Actually, uh, we don't know what our customers are doing. Uh, the services is processing some images. We, we don't keep uh, those images for, our, for ourselves or whatever. It's really the ownership is, uh, for, for all the data is in the hands of the customers. So the, the privacy, uh, there are some uh, privacy or GDPR questions. We provide to uh, our customers some tools to help them 
to encrypt the data to make sure that uh, the, the security compliance is, is, is being done in an automated way. But, uh, um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's the responsibility of, of each and every of our customers to uh, really make sure that uh, they, they use the, the data in the correct way. Just a, a simple question about Alexa. Um, when it comes to France, uh, will you be able to seamlessly switch between languages so that multilingual families can, can use it? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, uh, I've mentioned Alexa. Alexa is also a, it's a separate division from Amazon. There are also customers from AWS, but I, I'm not part of the Alexa team, so sorry, I don't know. Can you please explain a bit more how you um, operate your, with your clients? Like, do you only provide the tools to uh, do any AI product, or do you also re um, can provide like human uh, human resources to like like act as a service provider? Okay, excellent question also, thanks. Um, so basically this platform is a self-service one. So uh, it's, it's rare, but some customers, they just want to use the platform and, and don't, don't talk to, to anybody. Most of our customers, they're uh, happy and we are happy to help them. So we have a, a team in many countries, including France. We have account managers to help them uh, really uh, get into the platform. We have a technical team, which I, I'm managing. So it's, we call this a solutions architect so that we can really go deep into uh, what are the features of the, our services and, and moreover is what are the best practices and the best way to use them. And, and on top of that, it's a free service. Um, but we also rely a lot on partners because we have small teams, we cannot, be, uh, we, we cannot spend months uh, to, to, to help you. Uh, we're not equipped for that. So we, we work with partners. We, we have also a team of what we call professional services, so they can also um, uh, help you for a few weeks or a few months. Um, but, but that's not our core business, so, uh, we, so our, our business is really uh, uh, providing the platform. We do a lot of training, and I would say probably training is the most important thing for cloud computing in general and also for AI and ML. We also do some um, uh, workshops, so it's a one-day workshop, you can register, it's also uh, completely free, and you, you will be, um, uh, let's say, we will drive you for, for, through uh, SageMaker for, so, for some examples, and you can try also in, in real, so, so it's not only slideware, it's really uh, uh, hands on the keyboard and, and try the services. Also, I just invite you, uh, in June, 19th, uh, June the 19th, we are doing our Paris uh, summit. It's in, uh, at Porte Maillot, uh, Palais des Congrès. Uh, we have a, a really a lot of customers, of partners and, and, and sessions to, uh, to talk, uh, to, to drive you into all the cloud computing. So it, in, it includes Alexa, it includes uh, AI, ML, but also data lake, GDPR, security, uh, and many, many other topics. Uh, so um, please note in your calendar, June the 19th, uh, Get, uh, we can send you afterwards maybe the, the link. Just re register online and, and you can uh, benefit from, the, from this. In the keynote, we have uh, Werner Vogels, which is our CTO, CTO of Amazon.com. He's been there for 10 years, 12, 12 years. I, I, don't, I don't remember from, from more than that. He's a very, very interesting people, uh, person. So um, that's really worth uh, coming just to listen to Werner. Thank you, Stefan. We are going to move on. And Thank you. Thank you.